It's a small world after all. 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 Welcome to PPI Recording Studio nestled in the cradle of a New York City. <laughs> Welcome to the third weekly episode for the month of May 2023 for Dedication Post-Isolation Weekly video series because we're getting it out to the nation and beyond. First photo you're going to see come up today is a thank you to all our YouTube channel subscribers and we've garnered a couple of new subscribers within the last 48 hours which is absolutely fantastico. So to my longtime dear friend Betty who's a new subscriber, thank you very much. And we have Sunjun who is a digital marketing wizard on LinkedIn. That's how we cross paths. And he was kind enough to actually subscribe to the channel. So thank you, Sunjun. And I really appreciate the text messages underneath in the YouTube com comment underneath last week's video. So to follow Betty and Sunjun's lead and become a new subscriber, very easy, quick, simple. As you're watching today's episode, lower right-hand corner of your screen, you see a red button. Click onto that red button, please, and that's it. You're subscribed. It helps support this channel on the greater YouTube channel platform, and you get notified when I upload a new episode such as today for this week. Hence, you never miss an episode. They're always interesting, unique each and every week, informative, very fun, and you get to hear Chip Fabrizio, the owner of PPI Recording Studio, each and every week in the background. <laughs> So next photo you're going to see come up is a howdy to my very dear friend, which is a new friend actually, way up New York State, and that's Anthony, the old man of the sea, who just loves to fish. He does a lot of fly fishing. And he sent me this photo a couple days ago. It's so cool. He was out fly fishing, and he caught this brown trout, and he has a brand new rod that he's going to be playing with like a little kid in a candy shop all summer long now, and he's going to send me pictures, so I'll keep you updated with him out fishing and catching all these fish is really cool. And I'm so happy for Anthony that he's going to enjoy his summer. Next photo you're going to see is for last week's, or I'm sorry, the week before episode. That was May 3rd, 2023. And that was with guest poet right here at PPI Recording Studio and dedication post-isolation, Robert C. Ford. And if you've not seen that episode, underneath the text description area, underneath today's video, you'll see a live link to that particular YouTube link. Makes it very easy for you as a viewer to go on and click on to it, watch that particular episode. But he released some very happy news for Robert and that is an original poem and you're gonna see the cover of the book now that's gonna segue. He has one of his original poems has been actually integrated into this brand new book that's put out. So he's very happy and I'm so happy for Robert and thank you for your continuing support over years actually now. And we'll have back Robert or it's to take take two. We'll have Robert back as a guest in the real near, <laughs> near future. That's so cool, man. So next photo you're going to see is for Project 142 Custard Series logo. And Project 142 is the sponsor to Dedication Post-Isolation Weekly Video Series. Website is www.project142.org. Facebook page is Project 142NYC. The website event calendar is project142.org slash calendar tethered to the website. Now, that website and event calendar and this YouTube platform and social media has all been, because of the pandemic now, utilized to the benefit for the greater good. And we support folks such as Robert C. Ford and his venue here in New York City called Sky Vault and Composers Concordance, which they typically work together when they do particular concerts in New York City. So... For this particular week, we're going to put out a reminder. We've been talking about it now for the last three, four episodes for Dedication Post-Isolation, and it's going to take place this Sunday. It's on Project 142 event calendar, and it's May 21, 2023, at 1 p.m. in the afternoon, and it's going to take place up in Arlington, Massachusetts, and you see the flyer as I'm talking, and that's up near Boston, and it's going to be at the Regent Theater, and it's a documentary called Ocean Angels, and within that documentary is featured Paul Cisuerta, who is the founder of Gotham Whale, which is based right here in New York City, but this is going to be taking place up in Arlington, Massachusetts at the Regent Theater. So we're so happy to support Gotham Whale now. It's a full year 
that we've been supporting Gotham Whale on this particular YouTube series, also Project 142 and a social media platform. So that's this Sunday, May 21, 2023, up by Boston if you're up in that area. All right, so next I'm going to talk about is these particular photos right here. So for this week, this is the new photo I'm releasing that we've started now almost a year with some of my underwater photography. And you're going to see a flyer come up with the appropriate name so this way I don't muck it up. And this is called a Gosselin's Fang Blenny. And a Gosselin's Fang Blenny is part of the bigger fa family, if you will, of fish called blennies. And you can find blennies around the world in different bodies of water. Very typical to find them in an ocean. You can find them in brackish water. You can also find them in fresh water. Makes, makes them a little unusual. And what happens with this particular blenny, not all blennies have fangs, by the way. Many of them don't. And, but this particular species, and then now you're going to see this photo come up as I'm talking for the Gosselin fang blenny. And this particular species is one of the species that does have fangs. It's named for William Gosselin, who is an ichthyologist at the University of Hawaii. He actually wrote a book, and you're going to see that photo come up as I'm talking. He actually wrote a book which has featured different fishes of the Hawaiian waters. And he has since passed about 20 years ago. And it's very common in the animal world and fish world when somebody discovers a new species, they name it after that person. So hence, that's why it's a gosselin and fang bunny. Now, the certain species of fang blennies, such as the gosselin and fang bunny that does have fangs, what they do is they retract in the lower jaw like a snake, if you will. And what they do is they use them for offense and they use them for defense. Now, most of your fang, well, most of your blennies, I was going to say fang blennies, but most of your blennies will grow anywhere like this one will max out two and a half inches. So they're small, but they'll max out like anywhere from up to three, four, five, maybe eight inches maximum. But most of them are in the three, four, five inch range. So you can imagine they're pretty small fish. And this particular guy right here, the gosselin and fang bunny, this little head that you're seeing here is about the size of an eraser of a number two pencil, maybe just a little bit bigger than that. So they're tiny. So you can imagine the, the Pacific Ocean being thousands and thousands of square miles. And to find something that small, you really got to know what you're looking for. And you have to be very patient in the water. And you can't swim like a madman. So point is, with the fang blenny, for offense, what they do is they stay in the little burrow. And when they see a bigger fish swim over and they want to go up and get a little bit of breakfast, lunch, or dinner, they scoot out of their hole, go up and take a piece, and then go back into the little burrow, and they're happy. And what they do for defense, which is really cool, is if this little guy gets eaten by a bigger fish, and what they do is when they're in the bigger fish's mouth, they put out the fangs, they actually take a bite on the inside of the mouth, and if they don't have venom, if they just have the fangs, the fish is like, man, I don't want any part of this, opens the mouth, and they scoot out. There are certain fang blennies that have venom. And what happens with that venom when they bite inside of a fish's mouth, the bigger one that wants to eat them, and they exude the venom, it actually reduces the blood pressure of the fish that they're biting on the inside. It relaxes the fish. They open their mouth, and they swim out. And the next photo you're going to see is a fellow by the name of Danny, or Daniel, I should say, uh, Nestestio. And Daniel, and I'll have a live link in the text description area of this particular YouTube video. It's really cool on his channel. He is researching to take that venom and utilize it as a painkiller. So it is a small world after all, and it's also so wild how the symbiosis of one species affects another one. It's really, really cool. So this is a Gossel and Fang Bunny. This is a new photo that I wanted to release in the many photos that I put out for you in the different scuba diving adventures I've had around the world. And this one you've seen before is from the same trip when I was in Hawaii. Actually, it was on the liveaboard dive boat from Aggressor Liveaboards. And you're going to see the boat come up from Aggressor, and we promoted them here previously on dedication post-isolation. So that's the Gossel and Fang Bunny, and this is actually a yellow frogfish that was in Hawaii as well. 
So we're going to take it out today. We're not going to do a happy birthday in the sense of singing like Chip and I normally do. We're going to do something a little different. This is for a very, take two, dear friend of mine, Bruce, who turns 90 this weekend. You would never know to look at him at he's 90, and he's really sharp still. So point is, he and Betty have been married for a long time. They have a really hip relationship, which is very cool. I'm very happy for them. They're going to go out and do it up to the nines this weekend for Bruce's 90th birthday. They're going to be going out, eating, carry on, having fun with family and friends. So I'm going to sing this for Bruce's birthday and to Bruce and Betty. And by the way, Betty, thank you. She is the person that subscribed to the channel earlier this week. So I sing you to sleep after the loving with a song I just wrote yesterday. And I hope you can hear what the words and the music have to say. It's so hard to explain everything that I'm feeling face to face. I just seem to go dry and I love you so much that the sound of your voice can get me high. Thanks for taking me on a one-way trip to the sun. And thanks for turning me into someone. So I sing you to sleep after the loving. I brush back the hair from your eyes. And the love on your face is so real that it makes me want to cry. And I know that my song isn't saying anything new. But after the loving, I'm still in love with you. Happy birthday, Bruce. Happy fun over the weekend, you two kids, you two crazy kids, as they used to say. Happy, happy birthday. We'll see you next episode. And once again, as always, thank you to Mr. Chip Fabrizi, owner of PPI Recording Studio. Thank you. You can appreciate this horn if you blow it. <laughs> happy, happy, happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday, Bruce. <laughs> we'll see you next episode. <laughs>